You're listening to The Dental Guys. Reality Check, a dental lab perspective on digital scanning in 2021. In this episode, we bring Brad, the dental lab guy, back to discuss the current state of the art of digital scanning. Is it time to buy a scanner in your practice? What are the biggest challenges the lab has with scanning and how can we overcome them? And is there a time where you should just say no to scanning? We discuss this and so much more this week on The Dental Guys. When the dental guys need an infection prevention product, we turn to Kerr and their total care line. Kerr has been an industry leader in infection control and prevention products for years. And when we think of infection control, cavicide and cavi wipes are the first things that come to our minds. It's automatic and there's a reason for that. Kerr knows dentistry and their products work. The dental guys trust Kerr products in our offices and you should too. Stay safe with Kerr Total Care. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to restorativedrivenimplants.com to learn more today. Well, welcome this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, the dental guy, and uh, this is, it's really, you know, Wes, it's been a while since we've had an episode quite like this, and I, for one, am excited about our guest today. Brad, the dental lab guy, is going to be back here in just a little bit with us, and I mean, you know, it's always a good day when Brad's on the show, right? I mean, he, I mean, it is still the lab's fault, though, no matter how many times <laughs> he's on the show. It's still right. the lab's fault. Can we agree on that? I mean, it's, it's always still the lab's fault. fault. It's always the lab's fault. I was on the phone for an hour and a half for the lab, considering yeah. the many telling faults. them all the things they had done wrong. Right. Yeah. Before we bring Brad on the show, though, what I would like to talk about is like what's what did, what's going on right now with you know in your practice when it comes to doing a repeatable way of doing things, right? Some oh. people call it a some people call it a system. Some people call it a procedure, right? Some people call it an operation, right? And some people call it a process. Yeah, right? I love these words. I love these systems, are so processes, good. And and Six I don't know Sigma, who, lean manufacturing. I don't, know, I don't know who comes up with this stuff, John, but it has to come out of corporate. Um, oh yeah. We oh, yeah. learn from corporate, right? And because if they figured it out, maybe we should figure out something from them, right? Google's inviting all their people back to work. Apple's telling everybody True. to come back to the mothership because face-to-face, -face, you know, get-togethers are... This got to happen. But here yep. the thing is, right? We're talking about scanners. We're talking about digital dentistry. Uh, John, you and I have been scanning for a long time. I've been scanning for 10 years, thanks to Brad, the dental lab guy, pushing me into the market years ago and uh but today is our next step in talking about scanners last time we talked about scanners a couple episodes ago you check that out we were talking about the new information regarding the medit i500 and there seemed to be this big push and even john was part of this because he headed off to atlanta georgia to the to the meeting where they were showcasing the i500 and there's these other companies that are picking this up larger corporate names is kind of like in branding it their own or putting their own scanner wrapper on it when it is a medit and um but then interestingly enough after all these deals right hit the scene half whatever price off they were offering if you bought one of these things group purchasing power deals all these type of things well guess what came out the i700 the medit right. i700 faster better bigger screen faster you know it's the greater two times the definition whatever it says it's always better one more thing as steve jobs always said right yep. to introduce the new thing 
the question is, and it came from one of our listeners, is like, do I have to do what the dental guys say and wait five right. years to hear on validation on this stuff? I know. I right. Know. But no, you know what you have to do is you have to actually understand the technology of the times and the history yep. of the technology to help you make an educated decision. And sometimes you have to go to the person we're going to have on the show today That's because right. sometimes, what, yeah, yeah. But wait, I'm going to come back to something here. I'm going to interrupt oh, you. Oh, okay. Second, All right. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Don't shorten the monologue, John. Too short. Oh, I, I, I to was bed. trying to, that's fine. You do your thing, man. I'm just, I know just you have, have to go to bed, John. <laughs> <laughs> I've I'm had tired. my coffee. <laughs> so interestingly enough, right, we've talked about processes, systems, operations, whatever procedure, and a repeatable way of doing things is a way to be able to review it, right? Yep. When you walk in and you are going to use whatever scanner you're going to use it for, the number one thing you're going to use it for in a general dentist practice, even in a prosthodontist practice, is crown and bridge. Most of the time, it is one to three units mm -hmm. per quadrant, maybe a three-unit bridge, but those are the most common things that we are going to be using digital scanners for today and probably for the near future, right? Yep. No matter what the super cool kids are doing, it doesn't matter. It's how does it impact your process? Now, today I happened to be on the phone and I was learning about something that I've never heard of before. And it's a way of looking at systems a little bit different when we review them. In fact, it's a very interesting statement whenever you say, you know what? I see an opportunity for a process improvement, mm. right? And that's the question tonight, right? Or today or whenever you're listening to this. And you're going to love this because we've got pictures today. You're going to want to stop the lawn mowers because it's lawn mowing season in East Tennessee. You're going to stop the leaf blowers. Stop picking up your pine cones around your yard <laughs> and go to the YouTube version of this video because we have brought to the table Brad Dental Lab Guy with the current state of what the advantages and disadvantages of what the lab is seeing and That's how it. maybe a scanner could improve your processes. And are we looking for a way for process improvement in our procedures, systems, operations to make us better dentists? Or is it just a fad to purchase something as a tax write off because it's more than $1,500 in our practice, something that could just sit in the corner? I'm not a fan of that, John. I don't I haven't bought many pieces of technology today that just sit in the corner. I like to implement and I know that wasted money is wasted time and wasted effort. I'd rather go on another vacation like I did last week with that and figure out a way to write that off. Right. And so process improvement. I know that Brad, the dental lab guys heard about this because he incorporates that word in his business every day. I learned it today from his own team. Process improvements right after the break. Hi, I'm Justin Goodbread with Financially Simple. So perhaps you're considering buying your first practice or your second, third, or fourth. Here's a tip for you. When you begin shopping for your dream practice, you're going to want the exact same practice that everybody else is looking for. But how do you find it? A mistake young dentists often make is they look at broker listings. But this is often not where the best practices lie. Instead, take the time to send out handwritten letters to the dentists in the area that you're interested in. Through blanket mailing, as I call it, you make a personal connection and stand the best chance of finding the practice that is ready for you. For more information about this and other dental related topics, visit financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Gobert is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. All right, well, we are back, and now we move into the part of the show you've all been waiting for, which is where we bring our special guests on to discuss some of these issues about systems and specifically about how scanning can affect your daily life, but also what it does at the lab. So welcome, Brad, the Dental Lab Guy. We're so glad to have you back on the show. Thanks, guys. Hey, John. Hey, Wes. Good to be back. Good to see you, Brad. 
Yeah, it is so good to see you. And I mean, tell us uh, really quickly before we get into the real topic here, how busy are you in the lab <laughs> compared to where you thought you would be or maybe pre-COVID? You know, kind of give us the, the quick, maybe 30 second version of how's the lab doing? I, you know, I don't. I don't know what normal was or is anymore. Uh, I don't think any of us did with uh, the whole COVID thing or where we'd be today, but uh, we're crazy busy. It's been a really, you know, a fast recovery and uh, we just keep getting busier and busier. It seems like every doctor I talk to is is absolutely just uh, nuts crazy. Um, patient care has increased. Patient's acceptance of treatment plan has, has increased. So it's it's been really good, guys. Well, good, good. good. I mean, that's what we hope to hear. I remember when we talked around COVID and there was just like this total uncertainty of what would happen in the lab business, just the same as there was in our own businesses. So super glad to hear that. You know, we have talked four years about this topic, but it's kind of been a little different. We have really been on a kick in the last, especially six months on this of, you know, kind of getting sick and tired of people just <laughs> saying, you know, everybody needs a scanner you need a scanner there's this scanner there's that and there and everybody if you don't have a scanner i mean i was in that but we're talking years and years ago this kind of whole how thing long started. did it I take like brad it, nodded to convince you you needed one John. well i felt like it kind of like reached this peak i mean and then we it practically was just like, had to give you one will it into your office i, to I get know you to use i know it. i'm i am definitely Do you remember that brad I think I, his I'm, scanner came from Dental Crafters, if I remember oh, really? correctly. Is that <laughs> yeah, where it I mean, came I, from? <laughs> I am definitely guilty of being a late adopter to scanning. No question about it. I am the old man in the room. He uh, does wait know, five years. <laughs> and I, I definitely uh, wait before I just jump into stuff like that. But I will say, like, I feel like there was this fever pitch of scan, 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 scan. And then it became this explosion of all these companies these new scanners, these kind of like this scanner from over here, which is sort of a third party. And now though, we're seeing this push back a little bit toward mm. maybe consolidation, you know, big companies buying up some of these scanners and there's starting to be maybe a little bit more solidification in the market of who's in and who's out. So it brought us back to this discussion of, okay, where are we with scanning? And really we, you know, Wes and I have talked about this on the show so many times, but Brad, we have some questions for you from the lab perspective. And I think the, the really to kick this off is we want to talk about the love hate relationship that we all have with scanning. And I think that, you know, we have that in our clinical side, hmm. but I know at the lab, it is the most urgent place for this love hate relationship. So tell us a little bit about, first of all, we're going to start with why do you hate scanners? What is it you hate? What is what drives you crazy about scanners? Because I know there are things that drive you crazy. You know, there is. Uh, and you're right, John. You, you know, when this originally started, uh, the technology was new and, and early adopters were in. There was a heavy push now, I think, in the last, you know, two years of everybody should have a scanner, some threat that you're behind in technology. Um, I'll bring a little different slate of that to you guys today. Um, so your, your question about what do I hate about scanners? One thing that's difficult, number one, is there's there are still several on the market, right? And everybody has their own proprietary system of how that file comes to the laboratory. So we're forced to have all the different softwares to be able to accept files in, okay? So there's massive manipulation of different uh, avenues of the information. And in doing so, when the information comes into the laboratory, Believe it or not, as good as the internet is, and we have two fiber connections that come into laboratory for redundancy, unfortunately, there's still missed data that comes into the lab. Uh, in other words, a file was sent from the doctor's office. We don't know it exists. It doesn't show up in our database. And the doctor sent it, so in your mind, it's to us, and we don't find out until the doctor calls looking for a case and we don't even have it. It got lost in cyberspace or the cloud source. Um, so that's been a, kind of a source of irritation for us um, on, the, on the scanning side of things. Um, and then just each scanner being different. You know, it handles different in the doctor's hands. Uh, you know, the, the software setups are all a little bit different. Um, is another source of irritation. And I'd say the last source of irritation is just training on the lab side. You know, they're not 
coming and helping us train so we understand the softwares and the setups. Um, so when the doctor has something or has an issue and we see the issue, um, it's difficult for us to have the, to receive the training to help them be successful with the scans coming in. Hmm. Now, what do I you can't think imagine, on, oh, go ahead, Wes, go ahead. Well, I can't imagine, you know, you mentioned this cloud storage thing, right? Now, I've fortunately, I've been hesitant to move away from the TrueDef, um, even though that it has m went through multiple iterations and changes. I think I've went through two iterational changes, even though there was three, including the one change with the newest version. Um, and then it went to Midmark. And fortunately, they have maintained the same cloud uh, connection center. And uh, they, they called it the 3M Connection Center. Now it's called the Midmark Connection Center. It is invaluable for the ability for us, no matter what local copy we have, we always have the cloud STL file of the case that was uh, started. Just today, however, I was working with um, the Dental Crafters Network. I mean, there's no question here. You guys know you've been listening long that the Dental Crafters Network is a sponsor of the dental guys, but, but long before the Dental Crafters Network was a sponsor of the Dental Guys. Uh, John and Wes were uh, members or actually users of the Dental Crafters Network. So I was working with Implant Solutions and we were searching for, she had to search for the STL data. And it was multiple folders going through. I was watching her on my screen. It was unbelievable and she's like tell me what kind of scanner you use because it was like linked by the scanner type then by the doctor and then it had this number because it's encrypted because you don't want to exchange you know patient information it was unbelievable so i can't imagine right on your end when a doctor calls and says hey i sent the stl over maybe a couple months ago and for a pretty good sized lab brad a couple of months goes by you've received thousands maybe absolutely of absolutely. stl files i mean how how is the data the data can be like yes we have a standard image file per se in stl but how is this working right now in 10 years how is it changing or is it getting better and it depends on the scanner, right? So you mentioned, you know, the, the Midmark TrueDef. The, so they have their own cloud base. So we can receive or go back on files back in their cloud. So that's a different issue. It's their database. Um, but when we receive some of these open STL files from some of the scanners, that reside, relies on us and our database. And believe me, um, our server is every year we're adding on to it. We're increasing. We're, we have to have a, a, a purge of our files. We can't keep it forever. Um, so we're always, you know, still purging files, but it's really put a lot of stress in the lab uh, on the IT side of things for sure for these open STL systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What are you going back to the clinical side though? You know, we were talking a little bit a uh, while back about, um, some of the things that drive you crazy about scanners. And it sounded like the, the training to get, you know, a doctor from being a new kind of a new user as a scan, as a, as a scanning doctor to being experienced. I mean, that's a huge challenge. And, you know, who is, who is doing the training? Is it, do you find that it's actually, I mean, in the end, I know these companies all provide training, but do you find that as a lab, that you're actually having to provide a lot of training to many of these doctors uh, for them to really get to where they're giving you information you can use. I, I tell you, I want to really, really be forefront and honest with you guys. This is a huge problem with scanners. Most of the scanners, not all, but most are being sold through some type of a third party distributor. So whether it's, you know, a, a Shine or a, or a Benko or a Patterson, or it's just another company they're selling through, not everybody sells direct. Okay. So once it gets sold through a third party, what we're finding is the third party is responsible for the service and the training. Mm. And it's a problem. It's a mm. huge problem. I'll tell you that right now. The training usually is fairly subpar, not always, but depending on where you're at. And what I really don't like about it is they're going to the customer, selling a very expensive piece of equipment. They're doing one shot training. Um, and again, not always, but quite often it is. Uh, they'll usually offer 
some will offer two levels of service where the doctor can choose for the quick and dirty or maybe the you know follow-up telephone call follow-up review extended training service but you guys know as well as i do the lab or the doctor usually will take the less or of the two because it's less costly uh, and it takes less time um, then once the scanner gets plugged in and the training's done the doctor has you know basically like anything you know training that they need to utilize to get better but what do you do now when your your team is trained up supposedly and your team walks out the door you know they move jobs or you bring an associate in or you retire and the new doctor comes in to the practice and has that scanner sitting in the corner and these are all things that i've seen um, all the time that are happening and then there's no reoccurrent training the companies aren't coming back and offering any training now they'll come in and i've heard the number of five thousand dollars from certain companies that will come in and retrain the dentist and you know how well that goes over uh, that's right. a significant investment right um there's a dentist office that I know right now that has two doctors in it. They were trained iffy. It's a coat hanger right now because they're having problems with it. And a new doctor came in. The new doctor called me and said, Brad, this thing's a coat hanger. It's about a year old. I'm coming into the practice. I'd like to learn how to, tra- how to, how to utilize this thing. And there's no training for it. You know, unless it's a significant mm. fee for them to come in and again be retrained, this has got to be fixed, guys. Um, or you're going to have so a who's, lot of so, really so expensive let me stop equipment just a second. out there. So who in that situation? What? So what do you tell them? Okay. So if the training's either been subpar, or it's a new doctor inherits a scanner, or whatever these situations are, what is your response? Because you're, I mean, do they even try to use it, and you're getting bad data, and then you have to go back and tell them that or are they calling you because they're looking for help i mean what does this look like are you having to try to show a doctor how to use a scanner from from it's an opportunity john it's an opportunity for a process improvement (laughs) (laughs) it's an opportunity for process improvement you got it Uh you know you guys know Dental Crafters' core values. One of our core values have been trusted resource, John. So we try to always help the best we can. But I'm not going to pretend to be the professional. It's hard to keep up on every system on the market. So mm-hmm. we do try to give the assistance up front. Uh, lately, I've been pushing back on these resellers, calling them and saying, what are you going to do about this? I have, and I literally just called one distributor last week. I had four doctors in these situations. And I listed all four of the situations, says, how are you going to help your customer that you sold this piece of equipment to? How are you going to help them? And every scenario I told you, John, is exactly what I have. There was a doctor who took over from a retired doctor, uh, you know, the doctor who joined a practice. Um, There's another situation. I have two young doctors that just came out of school a year ago. They came into a practice that has a scanner. Again, no training, but they're picking up the wand and they're scanning. So Mm. I end up seeing the issues. You know, we'll have problems with margins, uh, problems with the scans because they don't have any training, but of course they're going to use it. And the two young doctors in this practice, you know, it's not a corporate practice, but the practice bought two digital units, right? They bought two trios and they are being forced to use the trios because management said, we spent $60,000 on these scanners. You're not picking up an impression. You're picking up a scanning wand. So they're forcing them to use it, but they don't have any training. So mm. right now, there's no solution, no process Wait. improvement. We're trying to figure out a way that we can step in and create mm. like every six month reoccurrent training programs for these scanners to assist in this. But I'm not which of course a lot is of help. free, which of course is free, right? We're the I mean, we're you're the just ones doing this the results, because, right? Right, and I guess it's not really free. I suppose that's a because you're. I mean, in the end, your your goal, one of your goals, is to decrease remakes. And to be actually be able to not have to be on the phone for, you know, three times on every scan uh, to try to get them through this because time is money. So there is obviously an interest in you doing this, but it just seems like the the wrong See, person having to do this to me. Yeah. And this is why I think, John, that corporate owned and distributed scanning technology, i.e. Um, Sarek, Serona which is not sold by a third party or rewrapped per se. It mm-hmm. can't be, right? It's contracted, right? Mm-hmm. 
and a well-established, right? And we're not even Seric users, right? I have my issues with some Seric, but then here's the, here's the advantage. They have a community, right? Yeah. You have Seric docs. You have even Serona, who has been known for, for world-renowned like implementation of scanning technology since 1990s. And yeah. then you got 3M, who had some, Brad, you know this, they had some of the best training in the world for TrueDef, and it was still an uphill battle because that's it's right. one of the hardest scanners to use. Right. And and then you take some of this stuff that's getting rewrapped by, you know, other companies, um, will not name them because I don't know the results. I just know the two that I've been involved with, which, you mm. know, are corporate controlled training. Brad, have they been the ones that have kind of unlock the code because they've been around the longest i mean it should that be a choice we're looking at before we get into a love-hate relationship here with our scanner you know the choice to me should be when you pick a scanner you better pick somebody who's going to stand behind the training uh, for some mm. time. And what I'm seeing is anything sold through a third party. I'm not seeing them pick up the ball real well. Now, there are some companies out there uh, that have taken an opportunity. They've seen this as an opportunity. And, mm. and I'll call them out. I'll tell you, in, in the last, I'd say, six to 12 months, I tarot, who, you know, years ago was not I my guess. favorite it's scorper. Corporate. It was not my favorite scanner years ago because they cut the lab out. They did their own margin marking. But they have stepped up to this occasion because I've seen Itero now change the software. The file comes directly mm. to the laboratory. They're reengaging the lab into being the, you know, the facilitator with the doctor. We're able to mark their margins now. And they have really stepped it up with their training, completely mm. turned it around. You know? So they've changed the game on the training aspect and are really standing behind the units that they're selling. So, mm. you know, there's been some chains and some opportunists that are taking this, but then there's others like Trias that are out from three shape and anybody in the lab business or the doctor business can pretty much say that I have not seen any really good training, great product, just not good training mm. from anybody who resells Trias. It's, it's been a difficult issue. Interesting. So, all right. Tell us what you love about scanners, because I mean, we we could obviously talk about all the things that are frustrating, but let's talk let's talk about what makes you happy about the scanning situation. You know, the speed. Obviously, uh, what I like about it is, you know, you can scan and we can get that file pretty quickly, so we don't have to rely on you, you know UPS, down. FedEx. Um, everything can get there pretty quickly. We don't have to worry about the weather and impairment or shipping impression materials or shipping alginate materials. Um, so that, you know, it stands out to be one of the best. Um, the other thing is I think it really truly helps the doctor identify uh, their own product instantaneously. So when you take a scan and you do everything right, you know, you pack a cord, you use two cords, you leave it in for 10 minutes, you control bleeding, and you get a really good scan, you're able to look at it and see your margin right away. Mm -hmm. um, so the instantaneous feedback to the dentist is, I think, a huge asset. Now, the question is, does the doctor take the time to utilize the advantage? You know, do you stop mm -hmm. and blow it up? Because remember, you can finger pinch that screen and you can blow it up super big. And do you take the time to make sure that you've identified that margin and you can even mark your own margin to show the laboratory? Do you look and make sure you did enough occlusal reduction while the patient's still there? You got to take the opportunity um, to evaluate your work. Um, but if you do, I think it really identifies, you know, the quality that you're doing and, and, can, han and can also enhance or push you to be a higher level practitioner. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So the speed makes sense to me. And obviously the visibility, I think it definitely makes us better preppers of teeth. You know, when we can see, you know, a 20 X version of our prep instead of a, a four and, and three dimensionally versus, you know, just seeing it uh, as a photo. Um, and I think that it's certainly made me a better dentist. Wes, I think it's, you would agree with that. I mean, it's, it's making us definitely better dentists when oh, it comes man. to prepping. Yeah. yeah. And especially if you're, doing any type of mentorship 
and training, like it's so easy to like go to the screen and talk about things versus trying to hold something underneath of magnification or a microscope and pointing out little tiny blebs. Like yeah, that's it's, I feel like it's the best way to teach a crown prep really, you know, is with a scanner because you can really show somebody what they've done and what to correct uh, in real time as opposed to, you know, prepping on a, a typodont, which is just not the same because this is a real tooth. Um, now, I was kind of surprised <laughs> that you didn't mention when we, I, we asked what you hate about scanners, you didn't specifically mention anyway, Brad. The, the issues that sometimes we have with what you can see and can't see on the scan compared to an impression, right? Because scanners are much less forgiving. I think we can agree scanners are much less forgiving. And what do you think? And I'm, I'm going to kind of, I know we've got a list of questions here that we're kind of working from, but I, I think, you know, let's talk about what makes you reject a scan. Because the same things I think that we hate about scanners, yeah, not the cloud storage so much, but, you know, how they work, you know, what are the things that are typically causing you to have to make that call to the doctor saying, I really, I really need another scan or I need impression or something? You know, uh, the biggest problem we're seeing is honestly the good old uh, back to the basics being a dentist, right? The mm. thing that hasn't changed with dental technology or with scanning technology versus impressions is you have to still do moisture control, right? You got to control saliva. You got to control bleeding. You got to control the tissue. That hasn't changed. Nothing has changed any different from an impression for the exception is you got to be better at it. You have to be way better at those things than when you take an impression. The advantage of an impression is you have the hydraulic force of that impression material going down between the hard tissue and soft tissue. And an impression can actually actually work to your advantage of pushing soft tissue away from hard tissue. But in scanning, you don't have it. It's a picture. It's a camera. So if you've got a pool of blood on the margin or saliva, or if the cord creeps up over top of the margin or at the margin height, it's going to take a picture of it. And you, you have no advantage or nothing else to help you. So you got to really up your game and you got to really follow your process of really uh, controlling that moisture and exposing that margin for digital technology. So a few years ago, um, the ADA came out with a pretty, I mean, it's pretty embarrassing, you know, dentist submitting impressions to a multi-center like different labs mid-sized labs like your your size brad and they calibrated doctors to just go in there evaluators and evaluate impressions i mean it's thousands of impressions and of the impressions received the lab 80 percent had errors and of the 80 percent 50 percent of them had critical errors and the number one critical error was tissue over the margin So what you're saying is that the same thing is plugging our scanners, but worse. And we're going backwards, Wes. We're going backwards with digital technology. That's what it's embarrassing, right? Is we're going, wait a minute, John, you're muted. You're muted. I'm sorry. I had to take you offline. Now I'm bringing you back in. That is hilarious. I did not know I muted you. But now you're back in, John. Welcome back to the Dental Guys podcast. <laughs> John the Dental Guy. This is like the Bill O'Reilly show. What's going on? It here? was. That was hilarious. If you're watching the YouTube version, I'm that was amazing. You. I've never yeah. had that happen. That was so hilarious. good. I've been But muted. I know what John's thinking. I quit. Because he is so upset about this whole thing. And I'm very upset. We have talked about John, I'm going to let you have this, right? Because I've I've had a few things tonight, right? But I'm going to let you have this. Why are we, why is it a race to the bottom? Well, you know, here's, here's why I want to bring this full circle. Okay. Because it's, it's to me, this whole, what, what I'm hearing from you, Brad, is that all the same things that have plagued your lab on the traditional impression side are plaguing you the same way with scanning, except the scanner doesn't have any magic built into it. Like 
you know, Infragum does or, you know, some high quality impression material that can be hydrophilic and get below the tissue. Shark fin. Right. <laughs> shark so, fin. <laughs> exactly. Just like a shark fin. So you don't have the ability to make up for the problems with some, you know, magical chemistry that you see in some impression material. So, okay, that is out the window. So you have to be a better retractor of tissue than ever. And that's been a huge challenge already with impressions. So then here's where, here's where I want to really bring this home. Who these new dentists are coming out of school. These, these new dentists. Yes. Who, especially COVID dentists. And I want to talk about that maybe if we have time. No, oh, man, the, the you, just labeled, you just labeled them. This is so I good. Absolutely, I've labeled them. When there has to be a specific article that's released from the ADA saying that they're competent, did you see this? The ADA yeah. releases a specific document saying, hey guys, just want to let you know, just so you know, these dentists are competent to practice dentistry. Like if, it has I mean, to be to me, said, it's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> like if my if I went to an orthopedic surgeon for hip replacement and I saw and I got a letter in the mail just saying, just so you know, my orthopedic sur the orthopedic surgeon is competent to replace your hip. I would never go back to that person ever. <laughs> I mean, that's the stupidest. Anyway, so if so these so new dentists, right? Let's say I'm sorry, I'm I'm ranting, I know. But let's okay. say they're five less than five years out of practice, and they are the ones that are being really, really sold because they're tech savvy. And I get that. Like they get technology. And ten, I mean, 10 years out, even 15 years out. But they are not being taught sometimes, or maybe they're forgetting or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> they're not efficiently retracting tissue sometimes. And, they're, and then you're telling us they're not getting good training on how to use the scanner. So maybe they haven't even mastered impressioning yet. Mm. And now they're being given a scanner, which is less forgiving. And I can't, I mean, is that what you're, maybe am I, am I overblowing this, Brad? Or is this, is there a, a combination of the sort of inexperience plus, you know, the retraction issues and then putting a scanner in, does that just put fuel on the fire or am I wrong? And maybe the scanner is helping us by being able to see the prep at a high mag. I mean, I don't know. What do you think? I'll cut to the chase, John. Do not, I'll repeat, do not buy any digital imaging system until you have mastered the art of taking an impression. Ooh. I would say flat out because everything you just said is 100% true. It does Whoa. not make you a better dentist unless you're open and you're humble enough to evaluate your work. You have to stop. You have to evaluate it, like I said earlier. If you're humble enough to look at your own work in the digital scanner and say, I don't see the margin. Well, if you don't see it, the lab's not going to see it. So it does not make you a better dentist unless you choose to evaluate your work and make yourself a better dentist. But I would say if you're a young dentist within five years of coming out, save your money, keep buying impression material, master the art of an impression, work with your lab and, and, and ask them to trim your dyes. Send the dyes back to you from the laboratory. Trim yes. your own dyes yes. so you see the work that you give to the laboratory and then start up on your game. And when you feel like you can trim your dies without a problem, there's a nice sharp edge and you see that margin, then you're ready to enter the digital world. That would Whoa, be man. where I would suggest. So. Man, see, you know I'm what? Gonna just tell that you is, right that now. is so good. This is Ooh, what it is which, because like, oh gosh. So man, we're it's so what everybody hyped Everybody needs up. to hear. It's what everybody needs to hear, John, because, and I'm not saying, I mean, look, look, 2004, you know what? One of my greatest mentors ever taught me, Dr. Rainey, he said, buy a Pendex machine, pin and pour your dies, and buy a saw and cut your dies and trim your dies under magnification. He said, do it for a year or more. And I did it for more. And he said, do this, take full arch impressions on every single crown prep. Because if you've mastered full arch, then you've mm -hmm. mastered quadrants. 
and you understand the abilities which you can do with a full arch impression, you can sure do something that's half arch, quadrant, or whatsoever. I, I could sell you my Pendex machine. I tried selling it to Brad. He wouldn't buy it. But <laughs> if you want to buy a Pendex machine, then buy mine, right? I don't pin my own dies anymore. But daggum, I trimmed my own die the other day, okay? I, uh, my scanner was down. Yes, scanners go down. They're technology. And I, and I took an impression, and I said, you know what? I'm not a going, because this was a deep margin, and I knew where my prep was, and I could see it in my impression, but I was not going to put that on the lab, and I got it back, and I trimmed my own die. Because it's not their responsibility to mark your margins. Now, unless they are point-blank clear, right? And what Brad is saying is like what I've been told for years. And so... John, but it's you know, hard, you're saying though, there. it's hard coming from the lab though it has to be hard to make the statement that you made because and i respect that a ton brad because you know it's most of the time i think the the idea is a hey, you know we'll 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 just you know we'll figure it out we'll we'll you know we can but you can't fake it on a scan you know you can fake quote unquote a margin everybody knows what we're talking about probably you can quote unquote fake a margin on a stone die. And you can say, ah, I think that's where it's at. And you can kind of make it happen. But when it comes to scanning and, and seeing these STLs, you just can't fake it. And so you guys are in a situation where you really, it sounds like you've kind of had to say, look, we just can't do this. Like that something's got to give and it's got to get better. And to say that people should not buy scanners until they've mastered impressioning it's a hard thing to say, but I think it needs to be said. It yeah. needs to be said, you know, and, and we spend more time right now in the digital world uh, using Zoom, getting the doctor on the phone and showing them, you know, their design, which they have the ability to do chairside, you know. So if, I ha if I've received that scan, it's been accepted by the doctor, and then I have to call the doctor back and do a Zoom to show them their own product and ask them where their margin is, um, it's a problem. And I'm seeing that as be an increased problem uh, every single day, the more people that are jumping into digital, you know. Yeah. Um, and, and Wes, what, one thing that to kind of to caveat what you were talking about, uh, I got a good friend, mutual friend, guys. Uh, I'll we'll call him Greg. You, Wes, you know Greg. Yeah, he's a uh, listener of the show. He's a listener. Uh, so good shout friend. out to Greg right now because I know he <laughs> listens to the dental guys. Shout so out. I called Greg and a little frustration one day saying, Greg, what do I do? How do I, I got to teach these doctors how to pack cord and expose a margin. And he's like, you know, I'm, a, I'm from the Navy. The best thing I ever did with the Navy is they put me in the lab and I trim my own dies. And then he mm. sent me a picture of his cord because I do get comments every now and again from a doctor saying, well, I don't want to pack a cord. Packing a cord's oh hard, you know. So <laughs> I told him that comment and he sends me a picture of his double zero cord and another cord, I don't even know the size of it. He calls it a shoelace. It's so big. And he's mm. like, that's what I use every day. And a blind person, and I don't know respect here, I did, no disrespect, but a blind person, he said, could trim his dies. And he's absolutely right. His dies are so, his margins are so apparent, but he's figured out his system. And, and he, you know, process improvement, he learned from his mistakes, he got trained in a lab on how, what his dyes look like or what his margins look like. And he was open and humble enough to change and he found the shoelace and he packs the shoelace is what he calls it to expose mm. his margins, you know, so. Brad, uh, Brad, a lot has changed in 10 years when it comes to scanning, right? And, but really tissue retraction is pretty much what it is. You're either going to cut the tissue away with a laser or scalpel or like, you know, curatage, something, right? Burn it off, or you're going to push it out of the way, or you're going to use some kind of fancy paste that says it'll work, maybe, right? Or you're going to use some kind of gel or some kind of like something, foam, pressure, whatever you're doing, you have to get the tissue off the margin and away. Now, yep. let's get back to scanning. In 10 years... Right? There's been a lot of scanners come on the market. Right now, I want to know what the best scanner is. If I'm if I'm in the market, the dental guys the listeners are wanting to know right now. We're gonna bring Mark Ludlow, yeah. John, on the show. He's a he's a yep. dentist researcher, right? Friend of the show, been on the show before, loving. And he's been doing a lot of research 
you know, on the research end. Now, we don't know what he's going to say, but right now we think we know what Brad's going to say. Right. I have my own yep. ideas of what I think he says. I have not talked to Brad about what he thinks the best is, but I think I know what he's going to say. What's the best scanner on the market right now, taking the whole thing into context, training what you do in your office as far as margin marking, the software in the office, the experience, the whole thing, man. It's got to be the whole package, what we're doing day to day. Brad? Man, I wish I could take a little bit of each scanner and mix it together and, and make my own scanner. Um, you can't. Because cause you can't. But there's no perfect scanner out there. Absolutely. You know, some have smaller heads, which I like. But then, you know, there's other issues. Some have bigger heads I you know that I dislike. But there's other advantages. So to answer your question right now, if a doctor called me up, and this has been a changeover, again, in about the last six months. If somebody doesn't call me right now, I would buy, if I was to buy a scanner, I'd buy an iTero right now. Whoa. I would buy an iTero. Yep, I would buy an I'm gonna iTero. Put up, I'm going to put up a, a picture right now, right, of an iTero scan. This one says it was a good one. Right there, Brad. Talk us about that. What, what's, what do you like about that? You know, let's just be clear that most or all the data that we're receiving – uh, and we've been comparing fits between crowns as far as the fit on the die. They're all very close for marginal integrity and fits of the dies, right? So what I look for is ease of use uh, for, the, for the doctor. I look for the service, the support, mainly the training, color in a scanner. Um, color is a is a newer advancement in the last ten years. Um, that that has and there's just the last few years. Uh, color is important. Uh, color really helps us mark the margin when it's you know when there's not a sharp edge to follow. We'll bring a color scan up and you can start to differentiate between blood, tissue, or tooth, and that helps us identify that margin. Uh, and that's, you know, just, I've kind of liked Itero and, and I, that's new for me. I, they, they weren't my pick here a couple years ago. Um, a close second then would be that would be the three, three shape trios. Uh, it's a good piece of equipment. It's accurate again, too. I, they just need to shore up their training side of things is really the only reason I, I kind of downgraded them a little bit. Mm -hmm. It is surprising. <clears throat> okay. Right. Because like years ago, um, we, Man, we were. I mean, Itero's an Invisalign scanner. Yeah, it's that's like what, that's, yep. that's the that's and what I have. And it's corporate training it. too. It's corporate training, yeah. John. Well, they've also they're changing a little bit. So you know, Align Technologies bought a neat little company called ExoCAD or Exo yeah ExoCAD. Interesting. Um, so that's a German company. They they make lab software. Right, it's kind of like Three Shapes makes lab software, so I think they're learning a little bit from Three Shape and bringing that element in. They're really yeah. trying to make the lab the hub around everything now, which I am obviously a lab guy, and I think that's where it belongs. The relationship is between us and the dentist, so put us in the middle of the technology. Don't try to you know cut us out of it. And Itero early on cut us out. You know they were marking their own margins; mm -hmm. they weren't really good at it. So now they gave that capability back to us. Um, so you know changes you know years ago wes john both of you guys have true def you know mm -hmm. and years ago that was my favorite scanner and there's one element of that scanner i still love and they actually take raw images and those raw images uh, really save us in marking margins quite often. Uh, everybody mm -hmm. else in the market, they take an image and then they render it. So you have a rendered file and there is a little loss of clarity in that in that rendered file. Uh, the TrueDef still has true imaging, uh, but unfortunately, uh, since Midmark took them over, they're just almost non-existent. There was a lab magazine I received two weeks ago and the lab magazine reached out and said, they want all manufacturers to send, you know, your updates and your scanners to kind of get everybody up on the latest and greatest of your product. Midmark wasn't even in it, mm -hmm. uh, which was really surprising. So, you know, yeah. and, um, we, we asked, uh, Brad, should we upgrade our scanner right now? Like, right. why would the dental guys change from the true def right now? John, you asked me that question straight up. Save your money. Yep. Save your money. 
because there is not that big of there's no difference between the scanner that you guys have and any of them that are on the market to make your crowns fit better uh it doesn't make you a better dentist and so i would say there's no reason right now to upgrade uh i look at this as like buying mm -hmm. a car right your car's working it's driving good if you really want to update there's gotta there's gotta be a feature you know, Bluetooth it's gotta technology. Be a process improvement, it's got, Brad. It's <laughs> got to be a process improvement that's going to make you a better. <laughs> you want to drive that car, right? Don't buy a new scanner, guys. Hang on to what yours ha you have until something revolutionary changes. But there, other than color, nothing really has come about that's a huge change up right now. Wow. Man, let me ask you one final question here, and we'll kind of close out the show. <clears throat> How are, uh, from what you can see, how are dental schools preparing new dentists for some of the challenges of scanning versus traditional impressions? Are new dentists coming out of school with enough experience that they know how to scan? Oh, Absolutely man. not. Not even close. Uh, and I was just down at University of Marquette here a month ago and uh, talked to the D3, D4 students. Uh, they have one scanner. Uh, there's an independent practice that works within that uh, that that school, and that doctor has priority over that scanner. So if they schedule the scanner to use it, uh, they could be trumped out by the resident doctor, which makes sense. But unfortunately, that one scanner is you know not going to provide good training for anybody in that dental school because it, it's not available. Uh, every dentist should be having uh, an availability of that scanner and scanning multiple scans coming out of the dental schools right now. If this is technology that's going to stick around, they should be teaching within it. Gotcha. Well, that's not surprising to me. And I think it's a it's a combination of things there that we talked about earlier that, you know, you have kind of a, uh, you know, inexperience and also maybe you have a master and we're not really getting a lot of experience with scanning. So it kind of comes back to you know, if you're going to learn how to do this, it's going to be training from the company, which is kind of inadequate a lot of times. So I think, man, as much as we wish we could just say, hey, just, uh, you know, buy a scanner, solve all your problems. You know, it's really the complete opposite. You know, it can take the problems you already have and just make them worse. And uh, if you don't already know, if you're not already getting good results. I think maybe that's a good maybe bottom line comment, Brad. I don't know if you agree with this, but if you're not already getting good results from the crowns you're getting back from the lab with impressions, scanning is not going to just, it's not only going to not make it better, it, it might make it worse. Is that, is that a fair statement? I think a very fair statement. I think it will make it. I can, I've seen it in the past that it does make it worse for sure. And, and last quick question then, if you don't have a scanner, how do you know it's the right time to jump in? How do you know it's the right time to buy? <laughs> you know, to me, it, the right time to buy if you're interested in technology and you want to implement it. Because remember, there's implement changes. You guys have been through that. That's a It's a process improvement change in your dental practice. So you have to be mentally prepared that it's going to slow you down, right? And, and it's going to change your process and your facility for at least 30 to 60 days until you perfect mm -hmm. your process, right? Yeah. Um, so mentally, you better be prepared to do that. So when's the time to buy? When you're ready to get into technology, you're mentally prepared and you've perfected, you know, how to take an impression, how to expose that margin, how to control the bleeding, then you could buy any time because I don't, th you know, technology is something you have to jump in. And sometimes you're going to jump in at the right time and you're going to get five years out of that, uh, that technological advancement or the, their investment. Sometimes you're going to jump in and then six months later, something new is going to come out. Um, you mentioned right. the 500 the other day. I had a, a good friend of mine decided to buy two i500s on a special web deal that the more people bought, the, you know, the cheaper it got. So he committed to two. And within two weeks after that, the 700 came out. So, you know, technology is something you just can't judge and, and you don't know, right? So, but if you want to play the game at some point in time, you got to jump in, you know, but be mentally yeah. prepared and make sure your system is proven to, to do a good, uh, you know, physical impression first. Well, we've talked about on the show, so go back, if you haven't listened to this, we've talked about what scanners do well. And there are certainly certain things, there are certain things you can do with a scanner that you cannot do with traditional impressions, you know, and we talked a lot about that with orthodontic type of cases, combination ortho and veneer cases, 
uh, where you don't want to take brackets off. We've talked about that with certain implant situations. I mean, there are certain things scanners do for you that you just can't do without them. But in the end, are those <laughs> are those uh, deal breakers where you would say, I have to have a scanner? Well, you kind of heard it here that there's a there's a counterbalance. Now, I think Mark Ludlow, when he comes on the show, he may he may push us toward, you know, hey, yes, that's true. But the advantages are something you just need to get trained on because the advantages are so good. But this is always good because this is really, again, I feel like Brad brings the perspective here of the brass tacks, the last this is the last person before this comes back to actually does this work in the patient's mouth, right? It's all nice to say, oh, Trios is this accurate or TrueDef is this accurate or whatever. But in the end, clinical significance is what matters here. And if you got, you know, multiple remakes, you got poor margins, you got whatever problems you're having, it doesn't really matter how cool the technology is if it's not working for you. So I think this is a challenging show, Wes. I mean, it's a good show. It's it's a show that needed to happen. It's a challenging show because it's the reality. It's a reality check for all of you guys out there who either have scanners, looking at scanners, maybe even companies who are marketing scanners. It's a tough show to listen to, but it's the reality. And I think, Brad, if you were to talk to other labs, and I know you do talk to other labs, I mean, everybody's having the same problems, right? Everybody's having the same problems in the lab business. And I, you know, I remember you guys are all relying on the lab to provide a high quality product. You want a minimum seat time, minimum adjustments and high quality. Uh, but uh, unfortunately it's the old theme of garbage in garbage out, you know, and if, mm. if garbage is received into the laboratory and we make it on that, it's going to be re- perceived as garbage going out. And um, so just, you know, it's, it's a constant thing. You got to be getting better guys and got to be improving if you're there. And I've seen a lot of dentists, you know, in their career where they've perfected their art uh, and they, you know, they do good reduction. Their preps are perfect. Their margins are exposed. Digital technology is a great fit. It's a fantastic fit. So I, I know there's a little negative overtone on this, uh, but in the right hands, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. But just make sure you're prepared uh, for that challenge. Yeah. If, I, mean, I mean, I think the full circle thing here <clears throat> is that did it make a process improvement in my practice and make me a better dentist? Ultimately it has, and I would never go back. I would right. never, like if you took, if my scanner goes down tomorrow, okay, I'm calling John, Brad and Mark Ludlow, you know, And I'm saying, what are we buying? And I want to know the software. I want to see it. And I want to touch it. I want to see how the processes work. I don't want it to change much from what I'm doing now because I don't want to interrupt the business. I want it Mm -hmm. to enhance the business and do what I'm doing now. Maybe do it a little better because I'm going to accept that scanners can't do much better than what I'm doing now, but do a little bit better, right? That's what we're looking at now with this newer technology and color and clarity but i couldn't do without it john and and yes we're negative on it a little bit we've always been a little negative on it but we've always Mm -hmm. been so positive on it because we both say we could not do the things we're doing now without scanning right john exactly i mean there there there's certain things that it just does so well and in the right hands i think it's invaluable and uh but yeah, take it with a grain of salt. We've been preaching that for a while now. It's not new, but I think this really brings it to where it's, you know, when you get the lab involved like this in this discussion, it really helps to bring it home. So thanks to Brad, the dental lab guy, for being on the show. What a great discussion on, mm. on thank what, you, Brad. you know, thank you for being with us, Brad, as always. Hey, guys, I appreciate it. And one last thing, it is not the lab's fault. <laughs> not the lab's fault <laughs> oh man i think you're right as much as i hate to say it and i'm gonna keep saying it's the lab's fault but down deep in my heart as much as it's hard for me to say it while you're on the show let me just say it's usually not the lab's fault in fact yeah, yeah, yeah. it's rarely the lab's freaking fault which i rarely. wish wasn't i wish i could blame it more on you but i'm trying I'm trying every day to blame that's more and right. more on you that's but right. we'll take thank it you, thanks for being shoulders. with us and Thank you. Yeah, well, I know that's true. You guys could take it. You guys could take it. But that you know, thanks, uh, thanks for being with us. And you know, for, if you guys and, and ladies have enjoyed 
uh, this show today, uh, we want to let, uh, you know, let us know, connect with us, tell us what you like, tell us what you didn't. And most importantly, leave us a five-star review on Apple podcasts, leave us reviews on any of the social media outlets, give us your feedback that helps us to get this show out into the ears of other great people who need to know more about great dentistry. And, uh, if you are enjoying the type of content we're bringing to you, make sure you tell your friends about this, tell your colleagues, spread the word about the dental guys. That's how this show has become what it is. <clears throat> and we rely on our fans and our listeners to make it better. And also if you have ideas for shows, we are open to that. We've got some great stuff coming up, but we are always interested in what our listeners want more of. So definitely let us know, let us know, uh, if you want to hear more about specific topics, connect with us on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the Insta. We are on all the socials and we are active on those. So please let us know what you think about what we're doing and uh, continue to tune back into us as we bring you great content coming up. It has been another great, great time with Brad, the dental lab guys. So for Wes, for Brad, I'm John and we are the dental guys. <laughs>